BS Abdul Rahman University, earlier known as BS Abdul Rahman Crescent Engineering College. Hello everyone. Good morning. I'm Kavita Vijayaragavan from School of Life Sciences. Uh, I'm here to discuss about bioreactors and the biotechnological products which we are producing on a large scale or commercial scale. So what are we going to do to produce a biotechnological product in a large scale or a commercial scale is what we are going to see through bioreactors. So these bioreactors are the devices which we are using for the production of biotechnological products. So we have two types of bioreactors basically. They are stirred type of bioreactors. So these are one and the other one is sparger type of bioreactors. So when you are working on stir type of bioreactors, this is the actual make of the bioreactor. So it should have a curved bottom and the top will be having a flange which is just looking like this and it will be connected to a motor with an agitator shaft. So if you see this is called as the agitator shaft which is connected in turn to a motor. So this will be a motor and this will be the top flange and this will be the agitator shaft. Okay, so now in this agitator shaft if you see, you can see an a breaker which is here on top and there are impellers attached to the agitator shaft. So the difference between this and this is what I am going to explain to you. So in this you will be having an inlet for the steam. This is basically for sterilization purpose. So if you need to sterilize the bioreactor, you will have to use steam. Then there is a port here and there is a port which is here on top and you have a port here as well. So this is for the temperature probe and this is for the pH probe. So if you have changes in temperature or changes in pH, you will be optimizing through this temperature probe or the pH probe. Now what you will have to do is, basically you will have to see in the structure that it has got a make which is totally made up of steel or sometimes it is even made up of glass if it is in a laboratory scale. If you need to visualize what is happening within the bioreactor, you need to visualize it in the laboratory. So we need to make it through glass. If at all we are making it to stainless steel, we use it for a commercial purpose. So since we are talking about large scale or commercial scale, we basically make it by stainless steel. Now there is something here which is attached to it which is called as a water jacket. You might as well have a water jacket for a purpose in which you can send water. There is an inlet and an outlet of water. There is an inlet and outlet of water in a water jacket. So this is for you to optimize the temperature conditions. For example, if the heat goes up to a certain level, you can send cooling water or if there is no, no heat, if it is cooling, you can send hot water. So that is the purpose of this water jacket. And again, there is one more part which is called as the baffle. This is called as the baffle. There can be more than six number of baffles in a stir tank reactor. Now if you see here, now our job is to put the nutritive media. So this, we are adding it to the bioreactor. We are adding a nutritive media and on, along with that, you will be adding the inoculum. So what do you mean by inoculum? Inoculum is a very small substance from the pure culture. You are just taking a small substance which contains some microorganisms from the pure culture and you are going to inoculate it in the nutritive media. So now when you are adding the nutritive media, the nutritive media should be added only to 3 fourth of your bioreactor. That is 80% of the bioreactor should be filled with the nutritive media. The remaining 20% should be left free. Why this 20% is left free is because when you are running the bioreactor, when the motor is switched on and when there is transformants which are going to react and there is something which is going on, what will happen is you will be having froth formation and this froth will be broken up by this which is called as the foam breaker. So there is something which is called as the foam breaker here. So these agitators are one which are supposed to mix everything for a homogeneous mixing inside the bioreactor and since there is froth which is being, on, being formed on top, this will be acting as a barrier for the transfer of oxygen. So for that purpose you have a foam breaker. 
So this is called as stir type of bioreactor. So this is the first type which we saw right now which is the stir type of bioreactors. The product which is being formed can be taken by this way and this is called stir type. Coming to this one, this is called as the sparger type of reactors in which again you have a curved one but in this you can see that you again as well you don't have any movable parts in this but instead you will be having something which is called as the sparger. So there is a tube like thing which extends to become a sparger. So this is called as a nozzle sparger. So you have small nozzles here so that what happens is when the air is sparged into it so you, you sparge air towards this. So because of the air which is being sparged you will be having bubbles which are rising up. Because of the bubbles which are rising you will be having thorough mixing. So thorough mixing is by means of the sparger here. So there are no movable parts. So these are the two types of reactors which we have seen in this class and from this we have biotechnological products which are coming out and after the products come out we are going to take it up to a process which is called as downstream processing. So in downstream processing we have five different steps in which we finally get out the product. First one is centrifugation, filtration or flotation. The second one is supposed to be you either centrifuge or filter or float, add floated particles to that so that you know you will be having some particles which are separated out. Then you go for cell disruption which is the second step. Then you go for concentration and you purify it and finally formulate the product. So if you see as a hierarchy there is fermentation products which are being formed in either the stir type of reactors or the sparger types of reactors and then you lead it to another technology which is called as downstream processing in which you have five different steps starting from centrifugation you filter the particles or centrifuge the particles then disrupt if it is intracellular, if it is extracellular just jump on to the next step which is called as concentration. You concentrate the products and give it for purification wherein in purification you use all the chromatographic techniques to purify the products and finally formulate it either using drying or crystallization techniques. That is where your product is ready. Thank you.